morning to all. This is Dr. Padma, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today's topic is surface charge density, work function differences, and flat band voltages of the metal oxide semiconductor fit. So we have to discuss about the surface charge density, work function differences, and flat band voltages of the MOSFET, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. So first topic is surface charge density. So surface charge density means if you take any metal semiconductor junction, for example, if you take any metal semiconductor junction, this one is metal, this one is the semiconductor. So in between uh, metal and semiconductor, in between uh, in the metal and semiconductor, metal semiconductor interface, due to the fabrication defects, some surface states are formed. Some surface states are formed. So the surface states per unit volume is known as the surface charge density. So we have to discuss about that surface charge density. So the surface states are formed due to the fabrication defects of the while fabrication process. So surface charge density. So the electron concentration in the conduction band can be written in the form of n equal to ni exponential of ef minus ef by divided by kt. So this is the equation for the electron concentration. So here n is the number of electrons. So electron concentration n equal to ni into exponential of ef minus ef by by kt where ef is the Fermi level, ef by is the intrinsic Fermi level, k is the Boltzmann constant and t is the absolute temperature. So the electron concentration in the conduction band can be written in the equation form n equal to ni exponential of EF minus EFI by KT. So for a P-type semiconductor substrate, the electron inversion charge density can be written as so NS equal to NI exponential of E into pi of FP plus delta pi S divided by KT that equal to NI into exponential of pi FP plus delta pi S divided by VF. So that is the equation to. So this is the equation for a P-type semiconductor substrate the upper p type semiconductor the electrons are the minority charge carriers that's why here we are calling as the inversion charge density so for a p type semiconductor substrate the electron inversion charge density can be written as the ns equal to ni into exponential of pi of fp plus delta pi s by vt that is equation 2 so ns equal to ni into exponential of pi f P divided by Vt into exponential of delta pi s divided by Vt. The delta pi s is the surface potential which is greater than the 2 pi fp. So we may note that nst equal to ni into exponential of pi fp divided by Vt. So compared to you know, delta pi s is surface potential greater than the 2 pi fp. So we may note that nst equal to ni into that equation 3 can be written as the Ni into exponential of pi Fp divided by Vt, where Nst is the surface charge density at the threshold inversion point. So the electron inversion charge density can be written as so here delta pi s is the surface potential which is greater than 2 pi fp that's why equation 3 can be written as the nst equal to ni into exponential of pi fp divided by vt where nst is the surface charge density so the surface charge density at the threshold inversion point so nst is the surface charge density at the threshold inversion point so the electrical the electron inversion charge density can be written as ns equal to nst exponential of delta pi s by vt that is equation 5 so the inversion electron charge density ns equal to nst into exponential of delta pi s by vt so here figure 1 is the electron inversion charge density as a function of the 
surface potential. Here on x axis we are taking phi s. Phi s is the surface potential. On y axis we are taking as the electron inversion charges n s that is per centimeter cube per centimeter cube. So it is a linear line. So that means it is a function of the the n the n s is varies linearly with increasing the surface potential. So figure one shows the electron inversion charge density as a function of the surface potential for the case when the threshold inversion charge density is nst nst value is 10 power 16 per centimeter cube so here we are taking the pi s values pi s means surface potential on the x axis and ns ns means electron inversion charges on y axis so it is a linear function it varies linearly with the uh, surface potential here the surface uh, the threshold inversion charge density value nst is 10 power 16 per centimeter cube we may note that the inversion charge density increases by a factor of 10 with a 60 millivolts increase in the surface potential. So, if you increase 60 millivolts voltage, so the surface charge density increases by a factor of 10. So, we may note that the inversion charge density increases by a factor of 10 with increasing a 60 millivolts of the surface potential. So, as discussed in previously, the electron inversion charge density increases rapidly with a small increase in the surface one potential. So, if you increase the small value in the surface potential, the electron inversion charge density increases rapidly, which means that the surface charge width essentially reaches a maximum value. So, for a small change in the surface potential, it shows the large variation, it increases the, uh, it increases rapidly with a small increase in the surface potential. That means that the surface charge width it is essentially reaches a maximum value. It reaches the maximum value. So the surface, the space charge with the XD or WD, the space charge with the WD can be reaches the maximum value. Then work function differences. So figure two shows the energy levels in a metal oxide semiconductor system before the contact, before the fabrication contact, before the contact here. The left one is the metal, middle one is the silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide is nothing but it is oxide, SiO2. And we are taking as the P-type silicon as the substrate. So, this is the metal or energy level diagrams of the metal oxide semiconductor system before the fabrication of the contact. So, figure shows the energy level in the metal and this is the metal and silicon dioxide, SiO2 and P-type silicon. This is the structure. We are taking the metal. Any metal we can fabricate. Metal, silicon or dioxide and P-type silicon. Here silicon dioxide is the oxide. So, it is called metal oxide semiconductor. Metal oxide layer and semiconductor. So, this is the metal oxide semiconductor. So, MOS structure. This is called as the MOS structure. So, the energy level before the fabrication of the contact. So, here pi m is the metal work function. Pi m is the metal work function. Chi is the electron affinity. Chi i is the oxide electron affinity. Chi i value for silicon dioxide SiO2 is 0 0.9 volts. So, this is the energy level diagram before the fabrication of the contact. We are taking as the metal oxide and semiconductor. Here, oxide we can use the used as the silicon dioxide SiO2 is the oxide layer. So metal oxide semiconductor mass structure it is simply called as the mass structure. Metal oxide semiconductor structure where pi m is the metal work function, chi is the electron affinity, chi i is the oxide electron affinity. Here as for SiO2 silicon dioxide chi i value electron affinity of the oxide layer is 0 0.9 volts. So, this is the energy band diagram of the mass structure in the thermal equilibrium position. So, it is the thermal equilibrium position after making the contact, after making the contact. This is the metal, oxide and semiconductor. So, it shows the uh, thermal equilibrium structure with a zero bias voltage. Zero bias means V equal to zero. So, this is the metal oxide semiconductor mass structure, the energy band diagram of the mass structure with applying the zero bias. Zero bias 
as means we are applying V equal to 0. This, this diagram shows the after making the contact. So, this is the P-type semiconductor. This is the oxide conduction band. Oxide conduction band here my vacuum level. This one is the vacuum level. This is metal. This is the middle one is the oxide layer. Here, pi m dash is the metal work function of the after the contact. So, the Fermi level is a constant through the entire system at thermal equilibrium position. So, we are taking the thermal equilibrium position. At thermal equilibrium position, the Fermi level is a constant value. So, we may define that pi m dash is a modified metal work function. So, metal work function means the potential is required to eject the electron from the metal surface or the potential is required to inject an electron from the metal into the conduction band of the oxide. So, here pi m, pi m is the actual metal work function, pi m dash is the modified metal work function. So, the potential, uh, pi m dash means uh, the modified metal work function. So, work function means the potential is required to inject the electron from the metal to the conduction band of the oxide. So, this is the metal this is the oxide layer. So, to, to inject the electron from the metal to the conduction band, the conduction band of the oxide layer. So, that is called as the metal work function. So, similarly, chi dash is the, uh, chi dash is the modified electron affinity. So, actual electron affinity is chi. Chi dash is the modified electron affinity. So, the voltage V O X naught is the potential drop across the oxide for zero applied gate bias voltage and is not not necessarily zero because of the differences between the pi m and chi. So, the voltage here the voltage is the oxide layer voltage V O X is the potential drop, ox, uh, drop across the oxide for a zero applied voltage. So, V equal to zero is V O X uh, V O X naught is the potential drop across the oxide layer. This is the potential drop across the oxide layer for zero voltage or zero applied bias. So, that is not necessarily zero because there is a differences between the pi m and chi. So, the work function and electron affinity differences, it is not necessarily become zero. So, the potential pi s naught is the surface potential for this case. So, in this case, the surface potential can be indicated as a pi s naught. If you sum the energies from the Fermi level on the metal side to the Fermi level on the semiconductor side. So, we are adding the energies. Uh, the energies in the Fermi level on the metal side to the energies in the Fermi level of the semiconductor side. That can be written as E pi m dash plus E v o x naught equal to E chi dash plus E z by 2 minus E pi s naught plus E pi FP. So, here chi dash is the modified electron affinity e is the energy gap, pi s naught is the surface potential. So, the equation 2 can be written as V O X naught plus pi s naught equal to minus pi m dash minus chi dash plus E z by 2 E plus pi FP. That is the equation 2. So, we can define a potential pi ms. So, pi ms is the metal semiconductor work function. So, pi ms equal to pi m, da, pi m dash minus chi dash plus E z by 2 E plus pi Fp which is known as the metal semiconductor work function difference. So, pi ms is the metal semiconductor work function difference. So, pi ms equal to pi m dash minus chi dash plus E z divided by 2 E plus pi Fp that is the equation 3. So, here figure A shows the energy band diagram with the mass structure with a P type substrate at a zero bias. So, it is a P type substrate. We are using the P type substrate with a zero bias. Zero bias means V equal to zero and N plus poly, N plus poly crystalline is taken as the gate that is using as the electrode. So, the energy band diagram through the mass structure we are taking as the P type substrate at a zero applied bias with a N plus polysilicon gate. That is the figure A. So, VOX is the oxide layer potential drop. This is the N plus polycrystalline. 
So, figure B shows the energy band diagram of the mass structure with a p-type substrate at 0 bias, but here you using the gate electrode is p plus polysilicon. polysilicon. So, in the A diagram, it is used as the n plus polysilicon gate. In B diagram, we are using the p plus polysilicon gate. So, so n-type means banding is in, uh, n-type means banding in upward direction. In p-type means in the energy level band diagram, the band the bending is in the uh, downward direction. So, that is the difference between N-type and P-type. For N-type semiconductors, we are showing the bending in the upward direction. For P-type semiconductors, we are uh, showing uh, in the downward direction. So, this is the P plus polysilicon gate. This is the N plus polysilicon gate. So, if the degeneratedly doped polysilicon, so we are taking the degeneratedly doped polysilicon, we will initially assume that EF equal to E. So, the Fermi level is equal to conduction band for the N type and EF equal to EV for the P plus case. This is the N plus case. So, if the degeneratedly doped, if we take the degeneratedly doped polysilicon, we will initially assume that for N plus gate, we are taking as Fermi level is equal to conduction band and EF equal to EV for P type. So, for N plus polysilicon gate, for N plus polysilicon gate, the metal semiconductor work function differences can be written as pi ms equal to chi chi dash minus chi dash plus ez by 2e plus pi fe that equal to minus ez by 2e plus pi fe that is equation 4. If the degeneratedly doped P silicon we are initially assumed that EF equal to EC for N type and EF equal to EV for P plus case. For the N plus polysilicon gate the metal semiconductor work function differences can be written as pi ms equal to chi dash minus chi dash plus ez by 2e plus pi fp equal to minus ez by 2e plus pi fp that is equation 4. So and for P plus polysilicon gate, we have pi ms equal to chi dash plus ez by e minus chi dash plus ez by 2e plus pi fp that equal to ez by 2e minus pi fp that is equation 5. However, for degeneratedly doped N plus polysilicon and P plus polysilicon, the Fermi level can be above EC and below EV. So, for N plus polysilicon, the Fermi level should be above EC. So, in for a P plus polysilicon, the Fermi level should be below the EV respectively. So, now, the degeneratedly doped N plus polysilicon and P plus polysilicon, the Fermi level can be above EC. So, the Fermi level is above EC and the Fermi level is below EV respectively by 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 volts. So, the experimental pi ms values will then be slightly different um, from the values calculated by using equation 4 and 5. So, actual experimental values are quite different from the values calculated by using the equation 4 and 5. Here, the figure shows the energy band diagram through the mass structure with N type substrate for a negative applied gate bias. In the previous case, that is V equal to 0, 0 bias. Now, this one is we are applying the negative applied gate bias. That that is means reverse bias. So, figure 4 shows the energy band diagram of the mass capacitor with a metal gate and n-type semiconductor substrate. Here we are taking as the n-type silica substrate. That is the n-type semiconductor substrate. For each case, we are applying the negative voltage to the gate. So, in the previous case, the gate voltage is 0. That is the 0 bias. Now, it is a reverse bias. We are applying the negative voltage. So, this, this is the pi. This is the surface potential pi m dash is the modified metal work function e o x is the oxide layer voltage drop and uh, chi dash is the modified electron infinity so this energy band diagram shows the mass structure with a n type substrate negative voltage is applied to the gate electrode so, the metal semiconductor work function differences for this negative voltage is defined as the pi ms equal to pi m dash minus chi dash plus ez by 2e minus pi fn. That is equation 6. So, the metal semiconductor work function differences for this case is defined as 
pi m dash equal to pi m dash minus chi dash plus e z by 2 e minus pi f n that is equation 6. Where pi f n is assumed to be a positive value. We will have the similar expressions for both the n plus and p plus polysilicon gates. So, so the pi f n is we are treating as the positive value. We will have uh, uh, we will have the same similar expressions for the n plus and p plus polysilicon gates. So here the figure 5 shows the metal semiconductor work function differences versus doping of aluminium gold and n poly p plus polysilicon gates. So uh, the figure shows the work function differences as a function of the semiconductor doping for the values of the different types of the gates. So here this one is uh, shows the n plus poly p type silicon. This one is the aluminium metal we are using the gate electrode. So this one is the aluminum n type silicon and this dotted one is the n plus poly n type silicon. These are the different gate electrodes. So, so these are the metal semiconductor work function differences for the different gate electrodes as shown in this figure. So on these are on y axis we are showing the metal semiconductor work function differences on x axis we are taking the doping concentrations of the different gate electrodes. So we may note that the magnitude of pi m is for the polysilicon gates are somewhat larger than the equation 4 and 5. So the difference again is because the Fermi level is not equal to the conduction band energy for the N gate and is not equal to the valence band energy for the P type gate. So the magnitudes of pi ms are somewhat different for the equation 4 and 5. The difference is due to the Fermi level is not exactly equal to the conduction band energy for the N plus gate and is not equal to the valence band energy for the P plus gate. That's why here the difference uh, is shown. Next topic is the flat band voltage of the MOSFET. So the flat band voltage is defined as the applied gate voltage such that there is no band bending in the semiconductor. So, as a result, zero net space charge region in this uh, uh, diodes. So, the flat band voltage may be defined as the applied gate voltage. So, uh, we are applying some gate voltage. So, even though we are applying some gate voltage also, there is no band bending in the semiconductor. Generally, in the previous case, we have shown that the for n-type semiconductor, it is bending in the downward direction and p-type semiconductor, it is bending on the upward direction. But in the flat band Band voltage, which is defined as uh, even though we are applying the gate voltage, there is no band bending in the semiconductor. So that is a flat. There is no bending. So that uh, that's why it is it is a zero net space charge region in the in that region. So in this figure six shows the flat band condition. So this is a, a simply flat. There is no bending occurred in the flat band condition. So because energy band diagram of the mass capacitor at a flat band voltage. This is the Fermi level. This is the intrinsic Fermi level, um, valence band and conduction band. This is the oxide layer. This one is the oxide layer. This one is the metal and semiconductor mass structure. Because of the work function difference and possible trapped charge in the oxide, the voltage across the oxide for this case is not necessarily zero. So, uh, because of the work function differences, there is a differences in the work function and the possible trapped charges. Trapped charges are existing in the oxide layer. The voltage across the oxide for this case is not necessarily equal to zero. So, we have implicitly been assuming that there is a zero net charge density in the oxide material. So, there is no band bending. That's why here zero net charge density occurred in this material. So, we have implicitly that assuming that there is a zero net charge density in the oxide material. This assumption may not be valid. A net fixed charge density, it is usually positive, may exist in the insulator. So, the assumption may not be valid. A net fixed charge density. So, usually it is a positive, it may exist in the insulating layer. So, the positive charge has been identified with the broken or dangling covalent bonds near the oxide interface. So, these are the defects while fabrication process. So, the positive charge has been identified with the broken or dangling covalent bonds. Dangling covalent bonds are existing near the oxide and semiconductor interface. So, during the 
thermal oxidization, the thermal formation of the SiO2. We can deposit SiO2 by using the thermal deposition. So during the thermal formation of the SiO2, oxygen diffuses through the oxide and reacts near the silicon. We are using as metal silicon dioxide and the silicon while fabricating process the oxide layer is interacting with the silicon again it forms the silicon oxide so during the thermal formation of the SiO2 the oxygen diffuses through the oxide and it reacts with the SiSiO2 interface it reacts the oxide layer interacts with the SiSiO2 interface to form the SiO2 so we are, we, we are forming the SiO2 layer by using the thermal oxidization method. So, silicon atoms may also break away from the silicon material just prior to creating to form the SiO2. So, silicon atoms are also breaking away from the silicon material which is prior to the reacting to form the SiO2 layer. When the oxidization process is terminated, excess silicon may exist in the oxide near the interface, resulting in the dangling of the bond. The dangling of bonds is due to, due during the oxidization process is terminated, excess silicon may exist at the oxide which is near at the interface, which resulting in the dangling of the bonds. So, the magnitude of this oxide charge, uh, charge seems in the general to be a strong function of the oxiding conditions such as oxidizing ambient and temperature. So, the magnitude of this oxide which seems that in general condition to be a strong function of oxidizing condition such as oxidizing ambient and temperature. So, the charge density can be altered to some degree by annealing the oxide in the argon or nitrogen atmosphere. So, we are using the annealing process. The annealing treatment can be taken in either argon gas or nitrogen gases. So, for annealing treatment, we are using either argon or nitrogen gases. However, the charge is rarely zero. So, the charge density can be altered to some degree of Annealing. We are annealing the uh, substrates. We are annealing the samples for some temperatures. So the oxide in uh, in uh, argon or nitrogen atmosphere, however, the charge is rarely become zero. So the net fixed charge in the oxide appears to be located fairly close to the oxide semiconductor interface. So the net fixed charge in the oxide layer will be appear to be located fairly close to the oxide and semiconductor interface. So, we will assume in the analysis of the metal oxide semiconductor structure, the equivalent trapped charge per unit area that is called as the QSS dash, the trapped charges which is also called as the interface charges or interface states. So, the equivalent trapped charge per unit area that is QSS dash is located in the oxide directly adjacent to the oxide semiconductor interface. So, we will assume that in the analysis of the mass structure, the equivalent trapped charges per unit area that is known as the QSS dash which is located in the oxide directly adjacent to the oxide semiconductor interface. For the moment, we will ignore any other oxide type charges that may exist in the device. The parameter QSS dash is usually given in terms of number of electron charges per unit area. So, here QSS dash is uh, the number of electronic charges per unit area. For zero applied voltage, VO, XO plus pi, SO, equal, pi S naught equal to minus pi MS. So, for zero applied gate voltage means for zero bias, V oxide naught that is the uh, voltage drop across the oxide layer. V, VOX naught is the voltage drop across the oxide layer. Here the uh, surface potential will be pi S naught that equal to minus pi MS. If a gate voltage is applied, the potential drop across the oxide and the surface potential will be changed. This is the condition for the zero applied voltage. So, if you can apply the gate voltage, then the potential drop and uh, the surface potential will also change. We can write that V is equal to delta VOX plus delta pi S. The change in the oxide voltage drop and the change in the surface potential. That equal to VOX minus VOX naught plus pi s minus pi, pi s naught. So, 
there is a uh, there, there is a change in the surface potential and the voltage drop across can be represented as v is equal to delta v o x plus delta pi s that equal to v o x minus v o x not plus pi s minus pi s not that is equation two. So using equation one we have v z v z equal to v o x plus pi s plus pi m s that is from using equation one we can write v z equal to v o x plus pi s plus pi m s. So here the figure seven shows the charge distribution in a mass capacitor at a flat band condition. So this is the q m dash. Uh, that is the trap charge is at the metal. Q S S dash is the trap charge is at the oxide layer. So the figure seven shows the charge distribution in the metal oxide semiconductor structure for the flat band condition. There is zero net charge in the semiconductor, and we can assume that an equivalent fixed surface charge density exists in the oxide. So we can assume that there is a zero net charge in the semiconductor, and also assume that uh, that is equal to the equivalent fixed surface charge density which exists in the oxide layer. So the charge density on the metal is Q M, and from the charge neutrally we have Q M dash. That is the charge neutral Q M dash plus Q S S dash equal to zero. That is equation four. We can relate Q M to the voltage across the oxide. That is V O X. V O X equal to Q M dash by C O X, where Q M dash is the charge, C O X is the capacitance of the oxide layer. So where C O X is the oxide layer capacitance per unit area. So substituting equation five into equation four, we have V O X equal to minus Q S S dash by C O X. That is equation six. So in the flat band condition, the surface potential is zero. So at the flat band condition, the surface potential pi s equal to zero. Pi s equal to zero. Then V z equal to V f b. Flat band voltage that equal to pi m s minus Q s s dash by C o x, where V C o x is the oxide layer capacitance. Pi m is the metal work function differences. The work function differences between the metal and semiconductor Q s s d. Is the trapped charge uh, trapped charges in the oxide layer. So equation seven in the flat band voltage for the mass structure. This is the um, flat band voltage V is equal to V F B equal to pi M S minus Q S S dash by C O X. These are the references for the semiconductor devices. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.